for some viewers, like they're more into the murder mystery, but I, but I love that I was allowed to, um, trying to, you know, show some of the heart and some of like what these people are like and that, you know, something terrible did happen here, but these people are here just trying to kind of keep going on with their lives. I had watched this, obviously it's, uh, it's all the things, but it's really, it's really beautiful. Um, thank you. It was, uh, surprisingly emotional at the end of it. So it's it oh, that's cool. excited to ask about it. <laughs> I, I love you saying that because, uh, yeah, like I would get emotional while we we're making it. And I was like, I hope this hits people because sometimes you don't know, you know, I'm so close to these people. So I was like, Are, is it going to hit them the same way? But thank you for saying that. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, I guess the what I wanted to start off with was like, I saw that you started your career in reality TV, which yeah. uh, I know kind of like famously pokes and prods people to get the right story uh yeah anything about that experience you you either used or avoided in making a doc yeah so when i first moved out to la what i wanted to do was uh direct music videos and then uh actually my sister who's on she set me up with uh this person uh named ben who gave me the a job at fear factor and then i was there and i kind of just uh like reality that was kind of like the uh heyday of that going on and uh there's a lot of money in it and you know the thing the thing i got most out of my time in that was i was a casting director for years so i would do you know interviews with people and this and like this is the back this is like early 2000s so i would have people i would call them on speakerphone and they would have to record themselves and then send us the tape and I started concocting all these ways because, you know, when you talk to somebody, they're they're kind of playing a character, you know, they're kind of showing you like who they think that people want to be on the show. So I would do stuff to kind of mess with them um, just because I knew the camera was recording and I knew if I did anything and I hung up, then I would get a natural reaction from them. So, you know, two minutes into the interview, I would just be like, you know what, this isn't going well. And I don't think you could ever be on the show. And I would just like hang up and then I would get their real reaction. And, and of course the wife would come out from behind the camera and be like, what happened? He hung up on you. And then I'd call them back a minute later and being like, Hey, just so you know, I was doing that just so to see how you would, uh, uh, react and, you know, an adverse situation. Um, and then, yeah, the poking and prodding is, um, something that the weird thing about re you know, unscripted at times is, you know, people who work in that world, their job is to create drama, right? So they go to these locations, these settings, and it's like, how do we get these people? And, you know, I don't want to talk to, you know, uh, disparagingly about that world, but I do feel like that starts to become part of making these shows too. Because when you're creating drama all the time, then people kind of start creating it behind the scenes too. Um, so, I wanted to do something where I wasn't forcing, you know, I wasn't having somebody be like, Hey, meet me here at this time to talk to this person at lunch. You know, everything there was just naturally happening. Um, when I was in Larima, you know, it, it, it's a long way away and it costs a long, and it costs a lot of money to get there. Like part of me, um, you know, I would do these like week trips there and part of me was like, man, I wish we had money where I could just like live there for three months to get more of that verite and, uh, just the feeling of the town. How much time did you spend in total? Like, I guess uh, not like literally in Australia, but just from start to finish filming over the course of your trips. Cause I know you used a lot of old footage, but it also seems like, I mean, we're getting a, a big swath of these people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. And the character's age. So it was around five years total. Wow. Um, it took us to make this. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think my first trip there was 2018. Yeah. Yeah. So over five years, um, probably like five trips or so each time I'd be there for a week or a week or so. But yeah, it, you know, it was really interesting because over my time there, the town was changing too. You know, when I got there, it was one thing and by the end, it's another thing. So that was an interesting thing. And, you know, that's what I love about Doc, you know, Doc too, is like you get to see those changes happen o over time. That's kind of what I was going to ask because the murder is like the the hook of the film, but but like the thing that was even more impactful to me was like 
the rise and fall of the town and and what's happened to everyone because you see yeah. that old footage where everyone's having such a great time and then you see it all just kind of fall apart. Was that a part of what you wanted to capture initially or was that something that you kind of discovered as you were looking into this other aspect? I knew from the start I didn't want it to be just, uh, you know, kind of generic true crime with just kind of it being spooky the whole time. Um, you know, both both of mine and my sister's parents are from Australia. So like, I know these characters and I know these people. And um, that was a tricky part about making the film. And I really appreciate you saying just like the heart part, like that's what I wanted to get across. Like, of course, you know, for some viewers, like they're more into the murder mystery, but I, but I love that I was allowed to um, try to, you know, show some of the heart and some of like what these people are like and that, you know, something terrible did happen here, but these people are here just trying to kind of keep going on with their lives. I mean, it's backing up a little bit, but like, so you're yeah. filming a year after the disappearance, I guess, because I was trying to get 17. Yeah. Was that, how did you find out about that? And like, how much, how much information did you have before you got started? Okay. So I found the story on Twitter. So, you know, for years of working in um, unscripted, I wanted to try to find something that I could do on my own, you know? Yeah. And um, I would constantly just, you know, Reddit, Twitter, everywhere. I was constantly looking for stories. And usually what happened is I tracked down a story and uh, or a person involved in the story. And they say, you know, X production company has already gotten, you know, gotten to us. Yeah. So um, this was a story that, again, I found on Twitter. And I just slowly started kind of like digging in a bit more. There's a podcast. Um, and then I would start talking to uh, reporters about it. And then, so this is about, you know, five, six months of research. I think it was actually seven months of research. And during that time, I'm pulling clips from the internet and creating like a sizzle reel in hopes that uh, the sizzle reel will then get me funding to go to Australia. So um, somebody told me, and this was like seven months in, they're like, listen, because I basically asked the person like, hey, can you talk to them and see if I like, will they talk to me? And this person was like, I've talked to them. None of them will talk to you. <laughs> so I was like, Oh no, I just spent you know seven months of my life doing this. So, um, you know, I'm one of those people who has a ungodly number of tabs open and I was just Xing out like every tab I had about researching the story. And the last tab was the Larima hotel and pub. And this is 2000 and 17. And my computer at that time, I believe was from 2000. Six. So I didn't know my computer was going to call them. And I just clicked it and it called and I got the pub and I got Barry and Barry was like, um, he was very kind, but he was like, listen, we're not going to talk to you. So da, 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 da. And then I just started kind of bullshitting with him for a bit. And then at the end of the phone call, he said, if you come here, I will talk to you. So it was just like, I knew if I got to Barry, then hopefully the, you know, the others would come as well. Wow. Did, did it help having parents from there? Did that give you any sort of like credibility or like? Yes. I do think that helped because, um, you know, just as Americans have their thoughts on Australians, Australians have their thoughts on Americans. You know, like one of my favorite things about my aunt is that she likes to make fun of America. And she's like, I told me she's going to go drink one of your Starbucks milkshakes. You know, she just likes we all drink milkshakes filled with coffee. <laughs> while I drink my Starbucks uh, to the side here. Um, yeah, so, you know, I mentioned that to Barry on the first call. I was like, listen, I'm not just some random guy. Like, my parents are from Australia. I did, like, half of second grade in Australia. So it wasn't that alien to me. And I do think kind of, like, that helped. And uh, our family business back in the day was, like, a meat packing place and uh, or meat, meat business. And... You know, Catherine is one of the towns that's semi near uh, Larima, and there used to be like a meat works there. So that was like another weird thing. Where I was like, oh my God, I think my dad must have been here back in the day. My uncles have probably been here. And weird enough, my aunt and uncle have actually met Fran like, you know, 10 yeah. years before I ever found the story. Yeah, they're, they're uh, like crazy cyclists and they do these cycling journeys like through Australia where you, where you only ride at night because it's so hot. And at one point they pulled over at Larima to chill out and uh, they met Fran. How did you feel when the, uh, when the audio tape came out? Because that was what, 20 last year or something, right? So you would have been at this yeah. time and then had this thing. Yeah, out. that was, um, 
that was like a hectic moment because that was like a lot of planning because um, we didn't put it in the film, but I was with Fran in Melbourne and then I had a crew up in the Northern Territory, like in the court. And there was going to be two days of deliberation or I don't know what you call it, something going on there. So I was like, okay, I need to be with Fran in case anything happens with her. And I should know after day one, if something happens, um, and then day two, I can fly up there and be there for like the final, whatever's going to happen. So I was with Fran driving back from somewhere and I had, um, somebody in the courtroom just kind of texting me everything that was going down. And the texts were coming so fast that I was just like, like, what is this? Like at one point I thought, um, the tapes were of Richard because of the texts were coming so fast. I didn't know that they were of the other person. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, like it was a crazy moment and, you know, that's real. Like I was getting those texts and I'm with Fran and, uh, before, you know, the scene at the end of the film, she's sitting there and she, and like, she just got that news. Like her lawyer called her up and was like, Hey, this just happened. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was, uh, intense. And then the next day I drove up or sorry, drove up, I flew up, uh, and then was there for like the final day when, um, basically like the end where they found out what happened. Yeah. So before all of that came out, like, I'm sure you try to be impartial as a filmmaker and stuff, but did you, yeah. were you putting together your own theories? Did you have your own ideas about what was going on? Yeah. You know, I was constantly coming up with theories and also, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff, obviously, that can't get into the film, even though it's two hours. Um, you know, people would pull me aside and tell me things. Um, yeah, like people would tell me really interesting things about people I didn't even really think would be a part of this or were capable of doing such a thing. So, I mean, and also it's such an interesting world out there. Like there was one, you know, oh, it's not in the film anymore. But at one point there was like a story of like this white van that was in town. There were these sinkholes that are um, uh, like near Larima, where somebody told me, you know, he could be thrown in there. So, yeah, you know, the whole time um, I was coming up with theories in my head, too. And like, that's the thing about the film too it's like who done it you know you kind of have to explain all those theories to get to the end to hopefully find a better you know uh to find out what happened did you have an interview that was the most frustrating because the, the most frustrating one to watch I, I can say was the attorney and i was like why did this guy even take an interview but i'm curious yeah. to decide like how how you were doing with all those yeah like honestly like that annoyed me too because like we, you know, we are, uh, where did we film that in the Northern territory, but still, it, you know, it was one of those things where it's like, Larim is still pretty far away from Darwin where that interview happened. And and I remember like, we like shelve something else to go up and do that interview. And during it, I'm getting frustrated too, but I do think the not saying, um, says a lot, um, with Richard, you know, there's one moment in the film where I have to ask him a question and I, you know, I'm, I was terrified. I was terrified to ask him a certain question and then what what his reaction would be to that question. And, you know, you can't tell where we are, but we are in the middle of nowhere in Western Australia. Like we're just on somebody's property in this barn. And I was just like, you know, like, and, but I do want to say about Richard, like, I, like, I do like the arc he has um, in the film because um, I don't know he's an int- he's like he's a very interesting character to me because people have very strong reactions um and then you know sometimes uh like this didn't get into the film but sometimes you know the doc whatever gods like shine down on you and just like i was in this town that patty um patty was in before he moved to larima that he got kicked out of and i was interviewing this one person and he like really didn't like Patty and was saying all these things. And he was like, yeah, he was friends with that asshole up the street. So I was like, who? And he told me the guy's name. And I walked up the street and just like knocked on this random door, not knowing like what's behind it. And uh, this guy came out and he was like, basically he was going to, he was moving the next day. And it just was like, luckily I was there that day. And he was like a really great, 
interview. We didn't have time for him in the film. Um, but I just remember like we were setting up and sound guy put a mic on him, him and I just always remember he went, Oh, Brad Pitt. Like he was like so excited. And then he told me a bunch of uh things that were a bit ter a bit terrifying. But you know, most of them were pretty chill in the sense that like the Larimer residents would invite me into their home and I'd be like, Hey, do you mind if I swing by at seven? And we can do the interview. Sure. You know, um, they were all very, very kind to me. So I gotta say that too. Do you have any sense of what might happen next with, with all of this stuff? Just given the time you spent all that. I don't, I really don't. Um, you know, you see at the end of the film kind of where it's at and, um, I do think a big part of this is the fact that there is no body, you know, there is no, there, there's no body for Patty or Kelly, um, the dog. Um, and without a body, you know, it's really hard to arrest somebody or not even arrest them, but, you know, get them sentenced. So, um, I honestly don't know what's going to happen, but I don't want to spoil it either too, you know? 